Hi, uh, hi everyone. Good morning. My name is Hung. I work on machine learning at Google Research. And uh, today I'm very excited to uh, share with you a little bit about TFX, short for TensorFlow Extended, uh, which is a TensorFlow-based production scale machine learning platform at Google. Um, all credits go to these awesome co-authors. Uh, I'm just the one who likes traveling the most. And uh, my, one of my colleagues, Vihan, is also here. Uh, and he'll be uh, presenting the TFX poster as well. So feel free to reach out to us and chat with us. Okay. So um, when we think about machine learning, most of us think about you know, fancy models and complex learning algorithms and so on. But productionizing machine learning in large-scale products is much more than that. And there's one quote by, uh, from John Oliver, the, the host of last week tonight, I really liked, which is, infrastructure is not sexy, but it's very important. Right? So this talk is going to be focusing on the infrastructure. So productionizing a uh, machine learning pipeline end-to-end -end is as hard as it looks and involves a lot of grueling uh, works, and mass production of such machine learning pipeline is even harder. And that's why uh, we kind of need a one a unified machine learning platform that can support uh, very efficient uh, development of all of these. And by end-to-end, -end, we really mean like go, uh, going from data, uh, you ingest the data, you analyze, transform, and validate the data. Then you train the models, uh, which is usually what we only think about, models and algorithms. And then after that, you have to evaluate the model, validate the model, and push them to production servers. And once you serve the prediction to the users, um, then uh, those prediction logs become your next version of training data, right? So it's a continuous process, and you have to uh, keep all, all of these uh, going. So that motivates us to build uh, the TFX platform, um, which support all of this. And it's based on uh, four main design principles. The first one is uh, one machine learning platform for many products. Right? So we want it to be general. This is not uh, every product build one separate system, just custom made for their application is not, you know, uh, reusable or shareable, right? We wanted to work out of the box for common learning tasks, and uh, but also uh, extensible for one-off use cases. So it should be modular and flexible. The second one is uh, we need to support continuous training and serving use cases. And as I mentioned, right, if you have a, a like a user-facing online services or apps or anything you will get, uh, constantly get new data arriving, and as you get new data, new models need to be continuously trained and pushed into production. And the third one is uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, humans in the loop, and that's very important. So we really need uh, uh, easy to use configurations and tools which allows users of various levels of machine learning expertise uh, to be able to use them and make improvement. And the final one is it should be reliable and scalable for a uh, production environment. So there can be many types of disruptions like data errors, you know, software bugs, configuration errors, and even just execution failures. And it should be able to uh, be resilient to that and uh, you know, send the right alerts to the right engineers. And uh, of course, it should be scalable as well. There's uh, usually a very large data set at training time, and even serving time, there's high volume of traffic uh, query per second and very tight latency requirements. So uh, TFX is uh, striving to uh, design to accommodate all these um, design needs uh, and principles. Okay, so here's a kind of high-level overview of the TFX platform. Uh, from the top, uh, on the top, you have the, uh, the, the front end for job management, monitoring, debugging, and so on, right? So uh, people who look at that might be you know, researchers, engineers, might be on call, even uh, you know, who, 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 who will get alerts and uh, see what's going wrong. 
And then below that, you have the shared configuration framework, which all of the jobs share. So you can have one common configuration language to specify uh, you know, how the jobs are connected and how, where the service will be run, and so on. And below that, you have the, uh, the role, which is the main pipeline. And that's the focus of the paper and this talk as well. And on top of that, you have the tuner, and that's the Google Vizier. Awesome, uh, awesome job by Daniel and, and the Vizier team. Um, and below that, you have the shared utilities for garbage collection uh, and, and data access controls, right? So when you have a large amount of data and each component's output uh, also very large in, in immediate output, right? So you need to garbage collect old data, but you need a pretty sophisticated locking mechanism uh, so that one job doesn't accidentally G-seed uh, some data that other jobs are consuming. And below that, you have the pipeline storage, which is usually a distributed file system uh, with a PubSub API, so you, each job can publish you know, data and where other jobs can subscribe to it. And today, we'll be focusing on the, the pipeline in the middle. And to make this more concrete, uh, we're using uh, Google Play personalized recommendation as a case study in the paper and as a running example of today's talk. Right? So uh, on the left, you have a uh, user visiting the Google Play Store on their Android phone. And when there's a visit, uh, this is sent as a query to Google, right? And the Google has the recommender system takes in this query and all the relevant features and then it looks at the, all the items, basically the apps in the Google Play Store, and use the latest model, machine learning model, to return the uh, ranked list of items. These are the top apps we think you will like the most. And then uh, once user sees that, uh, users can take certain actions like clicks, installs, and others. All of these go into the logs which picked up by the learner and uh, produces the next generation of models. So kind of the lower right uh, circle is what uh, uses TFX end-to-end -end machine learning platform here. And just to give you a, a sense of the scale of the problems, uh, right, uh, so Google Play has over 1 billion uh, Android users, over 1 million Android apps, and available in over uh, 190 countries. Right. And the training data is uh, usually on, on, on the order of hundreds of billions of training examples. And uh, you know, at serving time, uh, usually the latency requirements is uh, on the order of 10 milliseconds or so. Right. So um, that kind of uh, motivates the, the, the development of the TFX platform that we described. Okay. So, now I'm gonna kind of walk through the life cycle of using a TFX, using TFX to build a machine learning pipeline, right? And part of it is involved uh, in, in the process of when you're iterating and tuning the model, and part of that is after you find the best model and then you push to production and what you should do. So the first step is data analysis, right? Uh, we know, all know it's important to know that data, um, and you know uh, we, we look at the uh, stats of numeric features and categorical features. Right, you have the how many non-zeros, and for categorical features, you have number of unique features, um, the most frequent features, and so on. Right. So uh, if you want to learn more, uh, you can check out the facets. Uh, Google, blog, uh, Google Research blog post that was recently uh, released, and we're using that. And part of the, the benefit of using that is you can find the skew between two data sets. So we also often think that what we serve is what we train. But is it, though? Uh, when, we, when we actually, you know, when, when we work with Google Play engineers and we look at our training and serving data, we actually found there's a feature skew between training and serving time. And by fixing that alone, it leads to a 2% increase in the app install rate. And it's probably on par or maybe more than trying out a, a fancy neural network, for example. And the next step is data validation. So um, 
Like this is, for example, uh, you have a training example that has two features. One is called app category, which is education, and the, uh, the second feature is number of impressions being null, right? And then uh, the product team also specify a schema that's the expected you know, data format, right? So the category, uh, category feature uh, should only have two possible values, which is games and business, and the number of impressions should be an integer. So the data validator takes in these two, uh, the, the example and the schema, and uh, produces two alerts, right? The first is uh, education is an unexpected feature value, right? So you, either you should debug the data, see what went wrong, or you should update the schema, maybe this is indeed a new category. And the second one uh, it alerts that number of impression is null while it's expected to be an integer. So maybe you should debug the pipeline or the, some other team who's you know, responsible for, for producing this feature maybe change the name. So you should uh, deprecate this feature. So all of these is making sure that we apply the same rigor uh, that we apply to software engineering to uh, data as well. Okay. And then after uh, that, you have the data transformation. This includes like string to ID vocabularies on the right, includes text processing like segmentation, scamming, uh, stemming, and so on, uh, normalization, discretization for new, new uh, numeric features. And one key point is TFX exports these data transformation as is used in training uh, as part of the train model. So at serving time, it avoids you know, using different kind of transformations uh, uh, and resulting in the skew. You can learn more at uh, the TF Transform Google Research blog post, uh, which was also recently released. And uh, once you uh, make sure your data is good to go, uh, you can start the trainer. And for trainer, we use the high-level TensorFlow API called TensorFlow Estimators, uh, which is also one of the paper in KDD this year. Um, so uh, here's an example of uh, using that for, uh, to define a wide and deep neural network. And you can define the categorical columns, embedding columns, uh, and so on. And then finally, specify an estimator and start training. Um, so because it's high level and uh, encodes a lot of best practices and hides the complexity, so people, even people with uh, less familiarity with lower level TensorFlow ops or machine learning uh, theories can, uh, uh, are able to use this. Okay. And these are some of the supported models. Uh, I think all of them are, are in the open source. Uh, offerings, and there's also a custom estimator. You can uh, specify uh, custom graphs uh, that you can run with TFX. Okay. And one of the um, techniques we found useful in training is warm starting. So um, a lot of times, you know, uh, you want the best quality model uh, using as little resources and time as possible, right? Um, however, when you have large training data set, like hundreds of billions of examples, uh, training a high quality model from scratch can take a few days. On the other hand, product teams like Google Play probably can't afford to wait a few days because uh, you know, they need fresh model to support the, uh, serve the latest user needs. So uh, one uh, technique we found useful is warm starting, which you can initialize a model, f uh, a subset of model parameters from a previous checkpoint. And from there, it can converge to be better quality uh, faster on new training data. Right? So this is uh, kind of all supported uh, by the TFX platform. Yeah, I think there's, excuse me, I think there's probably, uh, is that really time? Or, a couple more minutes? Yeah, because <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the time started. Yeah, I'll keep going, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then after the training, uh, we have the model evaluation and validation. I think the evaluation part is the human-facing interactive tools when you're running experiments. Right. And validation is after uh, you produce the uh, production model, and it's machine-facing and automatic checks for goodness. And by goodness, we mean uh, it should be safe to serve, it doesn't crash, 
in the servers and it shouldn't use too much resources when given a, a, a badly formed example. And it should meet the prediction quality thresholds. And uh, one of the things we found that is product teams usually initially are uh, kind of skeptical of the importance of this until the first fire in production. So it's kind of like the mandatory uh, auto insurance. You don't need, know you need it until your first car crash kind of thing. Um, so that's why it's enabled by default uh, in TFX. And of course, you can adjust that, but it's like providing minimal uh, protection. And slicing uh, as part of the model validation is also important. So you can understand how your model performs on different data subset with certain features so that your model doesn't sacrifice quality on some slices uh, for better overall performance. Right. And kind of if there's one lesson learned from all of these is anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So human uh, inspection is needed, but what you really uh, need is automatic validation for uh, both data, model, and serving. Okay. And the final component is uh, the serving part. Uh, TensorFlow serving is also open sourced and uh, it provides a lot of um, serving optimizations out of the box, for example, the multi-tenancy with isolation. So if you have one server that's serving multiple models, it uh, uh, assign separate threat pools for uh, different models loading and serving op operations though, so they don't interfere with each other and uh, you know increase your peak latency and there's also fast data deserialization so uh, it has the benefit of using a common tensorflow example format but also you know a, a specialized protocol buffer parser so that it's uh, much faster at serving time you can learn more at tensorflow.org slash serving. And uh, finally, as mentioned, uh, it should be modular and extensible, so not all the products need to use you know, all the components. They can pick and choose uh, the components they need, and uh, they can uh, train multiple models within the same TFX pipeline. And uh, this is kind of uh, the final thoughts I'd like to share. I think it's from one of our colleagues. This is uh, thinking about uh, th different layers of scaling the best practices from one use cases to everywhere, right? So the first layer is uh, documentation. We all, need, we all know it's very uh, important to document the best practices, but it's kind of a rather passive best practice which is there, there's no guarantee that your user will see the documentation, right? The second layer is education. So now you're going from passive to act actively reaching out and you know, giving talks, tutorials, and teaching people how to use machine learning the right way. But even that, people tend to forget or just ignore, right? So uh, the, the final layer of protection and make sure you scale the best practices to as many places as possible is automation. And that's kind of one of the key principles that uh, behind TFX and uh, also what we strive to do more. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank you very much for listening to the talk. Uh, you can learn more at uh, Google Research Blog and tensorflow.org. Search for these things. Uh, if you have any questions or are interested in working with us, either through uh, open source uh, or like physically working with us, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to, to us. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you so much.